I remember the feelings of vulnerability, of anxiety, and what it feels like to be on the outside. And I think that makes me more empathetic as a leader, and also it helps me be a better champion, fighting for the rights of others who are not within mainstream America. Vulnerable and anxious, sentiments of an immigrant girl from Taiwan who became the first Asian American woman in history to serve in a president's cabinet, George W. Bush's labor secretary, and now President Trump's secretary of transportation, Elaine Chao. You were eight years old and you were on a cargo ship. Yep, but as an adult looking back and seeing my mother, who was only like 27, you know, how frightening it must have been for her as the only woman aboard this cargo ship. Is, is that right? With three young girls. I mean, that's pretty rough. They reunited with her father, who had come to America three years earlier. So I started in Queens, New York. My family and I lived in a one-bedroom apartment. Those initial years were very hard. I remember how tough it was to try to learn a new culture, a new language, and just to adapt to like ordinary daily stuff like the food. Most Chinese don't eat meat between breads. You spoke no English. No. And the kids were mean to me. <laughs> kids are mean, huh? Well, you know, that's life. But again, I think, you know, I grew up in such a loving, secure uh, family. And my parents were so inspirational despite all the adversities and the toughness of adjustment. Chow's father did very well in the U.S., becoming a wealthy shipping magnet. Expectations for his daughter were high. I was really scared that I would not be able to catch on to mainstream America. I wouldn't be able to find a job. I couldn't make anything of myself. I'd be a disgrace to my family and... A lot so, of pressure. A lot of pressure. So you went to Mount Holyoke, yes. a, a women's college. Because we thought that that was the best place for a young girl to be. <laughs> Little did I know then, there would be like weekend dating situations. How'd that go? Oh my, I never dated in my whole entire life. I never went to my senior prom, never went to my junior prom. That makes me sad. Oh, that's okay. I'm not, did nobody it make asked. You sad? No. <laughs> I didn't understand the significance of it. I didn't understand so many things. After college, it was Harvard Business School for what she thought would be a career in banking until she got a White House fellowship in 1983 during the Reagan administration. As I'm doing research, trying to help contribute to the writing of his speech when I was a White House fellow, like the bell went off, ding, 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 ding. It's going, hey, I believe in all this stuff. I'm actually Republican. Chow steadily climbed the GOP ranks with an appointment to the Maritime Commission, then Deputy Transportation Secretary and Peace Corps Director. Later, she ran the United Way. It was around that time she met her husband, Senator Mitch McConnell, who was now the Senate Majority Leader. You are one half of sort of the ultimate power couple in Washington. Is that there's so many power couples? There nowadays. are, there are actually. It's different than it used yeah. to be. I have to say this part because this is really important. You've got to leave this in. <laughs> I call him my low maintenance husband. Uh huh. He does his own laundry and he cooks. He really does his own laundry. He does it. He does mine too sometimes. Really? Yeah, he's really good. So life with him, you know, is very easy that way, and he's very encouraging. Is he a good cook? He's actually a very good cook. She scoffs at a story she once read claiming she keeps files on her husband's donors and supporters, but not why you'd think. There was this article that said I took notes on people. Uh -huh. I didn't take notes. It was all up here. <laughs> I have an incredible memory. It's just one of you know life's blessings. If I met you 24 years ago, I can remember the place, the time, the circumstances. That's a great and asset it, in politics. It, well, it, it's proven to be pretty helpful. Her mother passed away, but her father still works and is still her biggest cheerleader. There when she was sworn in as transportation secretary. This is January 31st, 2017 at 530. I told you I have a good memory. <laughs> you sure do. He's 90 years old and he's very hopeful, very optimistic. He's got a great attitude. So this is a, a photo of part of my family because not all of them were able to come. A large number of the family came. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun. You're so family oriented and you never had kids. No, I never did. Is that a you regret? You know why? 
Well, on some days it is. I try not to have too many regrets. But I will say to young women, you know, when in my generation, we were taught that we can have it all. Well, it doesn't work like that. So I try to counsel young women, regardless as to whether they want it or not, there are trade-offs and sacrifices in life. Did you know that you were no, making a trade-off? No children of her own, but countless stories of Asian Americans looking to her for inspiration. I've read that Chinese American families used to meet you at the airport just to say oh hi. Oh my gosh, I mean, I would go to events. Asian American families would show up everywhere. And there'd what be like a- What was that like? There'd be like an instant bond. As Transportation Secretary, Chow is in charge of almost 60,000 employees in a slew of agencies, including the FAA. Every airplane that's in the air yes. is represented here. Yes. I didn't have a lot of role models, but that didn't hurt me. For young people, young women, I want to give them strength and hope and confidence. Just because there are no role models doesn't mean that you can't be the future role model that you now seek. Just pursue your life's passion. Do what you really love, and the way will unfold.